conditions were ideal again. Not a cloud in the sky, and the pitch obviously going to play very easily. England had a marvellous chance here to take the Australian bowling by the scruff of the neck and get a sizeable total at which a declaration could be made. For the Australians, well, their job simply was to contain the England batsmen. We join play with the first ball of the day, and it's Dennis Lilly bowling to John Edrich. And confidently stopped by Edrich. A little bit of a loosener there from Lilly. Half volley, but very nicely put away. And if that's the pattern of the morning's play, it'll be a good day for England. So Edrich quickly into his stride there with three runs. That's a good shot. Much freer Edrich here this morning. Stroke that away very, very nicely indeed for four. Now Foley on the leg stump. It was no real slog. It was a very good shot. Another beautiful shot for four runs. And this is exactly what England wanted. Edrich two boundaries already in a three. He's had 11 runs in the first six minutes here. It's a half volley, nicely clipped away by Amos. It's Edwards in pursuit again. Amos running well there. And the first two quickly able to take the third. And the sort of shot that will do Dennis Amos a power of good this morning. Firmly struck in the middle of the bat, moves on to nine. And that's another good shot. Really fine form being shown here this morning by John Edrich, clipping that through mid wicket. Both bowlers coming alight to him at the moment. So Lily bowling again to Amos. And that's it, he's caught him in the slips. And that's going to hurt. That went very quickly. I don't think he took it right in the middle of the hand, but safe as ever. Great chapel. Clinging onto that. And uh, it's the old, old story, I'm afraid, that Dennis Lilly has dismissed Dennis Amos once again. And this is the departure again of Dennis Amos. No movement, as you can see, at all in the ball there. But England looking for runs. And the edge catch being offered there to Greg Chapel. Short leg gone in now. And a short one hooked away. Graham Gooch having a little look round to see exactly where it did go. But it went for four. And once again he's off the mark with a boundary. And Gooch left a hurry. And he only just scrambled in there, a little slow and light setting off. Andrich looking for the single here off the last ball. Hesitation there by Gooch before he really gets into top gear. And a very close call indeed. And that's through the slips. Quite well intended it, but it's going to bring four runs to John Edwards. Oh, 260 now for three. Edwards moving on to 125. And the England lead on to 307. That's four runs. And we move to double figures for the first time in the test innings. down towards the pavilion into the rails a good-looking stroke from John Edrich moving into Walker the ball wasn't over pitched he hit it on the up it's a good shot 
and that'll be four more. It's also played a few running off the edge like that. And this extremely fast outfield gives the fieldsman no chance at all. Good shot, four runs. Really timed that well and placed it even better. Thumped it away between Edwards and Makoska. Neither had the slightest chance of cutting that off. That's one of the few half follies Lily has bowled this morning. Max Walker then to John Edridge. And that's a beautiful stroke. <laughs> Two extra cover. Well, that was another lovely shot. He played in one very similar to that against Dennis Lilly in the last over. 11 over spell this morning at the start of this over. One for 33. It's hoping himself a little bit. That will go through again for four. Even Gilmore, no chance of cutting it off once it beats the field down there towards the top. So the 300 coming up, 303 now for three. With Adrich moving the score under 146. Well, here with one slip and an extra cover off the short run into Edrich. Tickle away beautifully down to deep long leg. That'll go racing away for four more. It'll bring up 150 for John Edwards. And the crowd, another good one here today, on their feet, rising to the Surrey captain as he takes his score to 152 undefeated runs out of an England score of 309 for three. In there a long, long time, 459 minutes this innings has lasted and he's been in occupation of the crease the whole time. 19 4 so far. Mullet to Gooch. He's bowled in. Actually, just a little pace down the pitch, trying to get to the pitch a bit, made it into a Yorker. And Mullet takes his wicket. So, Graham Gooch, the fourth man out for England, he made 31 and enjoyed a partnership of 56 with John Edrich. This is how he finally went. Taking this little pace down the wicket, making it into a Yorker there. Well, the Slorts crowd have taken Tony Gregg to the hearts, uh, in a, another fine reception. And I suppose the situation made here for the England captain, coming in at 315 for four of confidence at the moment everything's been going extremely well for him not only his captaincy but his batting as well made the fine 96 in the first innings good full swing of the bat first ball from Greg gets him off the mark the overall read, uh, lead is 375, and now it's Jeff Thompson to Tony Gregg. That's four runs. Very firmly hit shot. Shot, four runs. Down the track to Mallet, giving himself a little bit of room for the shot. And he picked the gap nicely between extra cover and mid off. Greg Chappell's head, but it went a long, long way over. Oh, well, that was a lovely stroke. Plenty of power in it, but the timing was superb. He just picked it up 
from round about leg stump. Hit with the spin. It went straight into the area just in front of the scoreboard near the tavern. So the lead now is over 400. 402. And another fine shot. Mallet straying round about the leg stump there. He has four men on the offside. So this is not good bowling. Just getting away too far towards leg stump. That was another lovely stroke. So Tony Gregg now has been instrumental in taking 34 of the Australians since lunch in only five overs. 163 to Edridge and 38 to Tony Gregg. And Ashley Mallet goes off and a very interesting bowling change. Ian Chappell is bringing himself on. A real challenge this between the captains because the only reason Chapel would have come on is to try and bowl out Tony Gregg. That's a good shot. Put that up nicely. Well wide of Jeff Thompson. Hit it away into the pavilion rails. Nicely judged stroke that by John Edridge, and it takes him on to 168. He's uh, now passed his previous highest ever score against Australia. It was 164 at the Oval in 1968. outside the off stump. There's no slip in, so it was quite safe. <laughs> Jeff Thompson. Fieldsman there. That's the first time he's thrown the ball in in the series. That was sidearm. He's been very careful not to throw anything over arm. Greg already down the wicket. He's caught, driven very firmly and very solidly. And Doug Walters at short extra, clinging on to a very stinging drive there. Well, I must say, a very bright interlude there from Tony Gregg. Admirable performance, exactly the innings that England needed at this stage. Caught by Walters off the bowling of the Australian captain Ian Chappell. He made 41 really exhilarating runs. And they took him only 53 minutes. And everything all through this match has gone so very right for Tony Gregg. 96 in the first innings, pulled England out of the dirt following this up with this beautiful little knock of 41. A six and five fours in it, and in the middle for less than an hour. This is Ian Chappell collecting his wicket. Tony Gregg dancing down the pitch and really middle in that one. And Walter's taking it in the midriff. So Ian Chappell has taken himself off with one for 26. And has recalled Ashley Mullet. Off for a short one, pulled away for a single by knot. That's in the air, could be out, and it's the end of John Edwich. So, after a great long battle out there, John Edwich finally falling to Ashley Mallet, Jeff Thompson taking. Good running catch at Deepish mid on. Uh, 
and appreciation then for the Surrey captain, John Edrich. A marathon stay at the innings, the man who's really put England in this exceedingly strong position. He's out for 175 and occupied the crease for nine hours. 21 boundaries in his innings, getting a big hand from another great crowd here at Lord's. So after nine hours, this is how it all ended for John Edrich. Coming down the wicket. First time he's really tried to hit Mullard over the top. And Jeff Thompson judging the catch well at mid-on. Edge there, Shuttle dive and it slipped. Uh, they scrambled through the hundred. 400 up then, 400 for six to England. And there's the old streaker. He's going to be greeted when he gets back. Probably picking up a £10 note from somebody. And Bob Rule must turn this time. He's swung it away. He's hit it gloriously. Right into the crowd for six. That's a fine shot. It's as good a shot as we've seen. A real good old-fashioned crack over the top of maybe off from Bob Woolmer. Yes, you don't often see that sort of shot now, and it, uh, it's marvellous to see over extra cover. And that one has gone for six, a very, very big hit. Into the tavern bar. He really did strike that one. Now, that was a good length ball, uh... Dennis wasn't it and they always go much further than the one pitched further up he really connected picked this up beautifully that fine four over the top followed by this six and picked it up gone with the spin and many a mile back into the crowd Woolmer here taking toll of Ashley Mallet he's moved on to 31 and there he goes third time and the wicket to Ashley Mallet. And that's it. There's the declaration. Tony Gregg, the England captain, on the balcony, beckoning the boys in. And the declaration from Tony Gregg came at 20 to 4, which meant that the Australians had to make two starts. Good tactics, that by Gregg. They had to bat for 50 minutes, then take tea, and then there was a shortened final session they would have to negotiate to go into the final day tomorrow. The England card, Edrich 175, a good long innings, did the right thing by the side. Amos out cheaply today. Gooch played one or two good looking strokes and the innings of the day came from the England captain, Tony Gregg, who made a brilliant 41, one of the best short innings I've seen from him. Mallet took three wickets for Australia, but it was a long, hard haul that had been set the Australian team. 484 to win the match and uh, only the greatest optimist in the world and uh, then one from Australia could have thought they could possibly do it. I didn't think they had any chance at all. Their only hope was to bat out the eight hours, 20 minutes to gain a draw. The pitch still playing well, but as far as I could see, the Australians today had to make sure that they didn't lose any wickets. Well, John Snow began the bowling for England in the second innings with a stiff breeze at his back. He was bowling from the nursery end. His partner was Peter Lever, who we see now bowling to Alan Turner. Four buys. <laughs> Beat him there. First real play and miss on the best ball that Lever has produced so far. sort of stroke. Turner, 
looking down the pitch as though the ball did something quite strange. Well, it just climbed a little bit, but it was a very poor stroke away there on the leg side. No chance there for Steele to stop that. A bit too wide. And no chance for Tony Gregg to pick it up either. Stroke. Anything on that side, if it beats the field, it's generally four. So successive boundaries now from Alan Turner of John Snow's bowling. And a change in the bowling. So the openers have got through the new ball attack of John Snow and Peter Lever. Peter Lever has been taken off, and Tony Gregg is coming on to bowl his spinners. And that will quieten the crowd a little bit. Brings joy again to Tony Gregg. And Alan Turner caught it slip. That one turned in just a fraction. And the breakthrough England wanted. Tony Gregg in his golden moment here again as England's captain. Doing the damage. Gooch taking a very gentle, simple catch there at slip. Came off at a very nice, easy pace for him. And he spilled it out. A disappointed look there from Peter Lever. Let's see again. Fortunate he was. Low down there to Tony Gregg. Good runs there. No long leg, of course. That's four runs. And in the leg sweep, very effectively too. But once again, he's outside leg stump. And that hurrying away down to the ropes for four more. And Ian Chuckle dealing largely in boundaries now. 17, including four fours. Three for four, way over the top of Barry Wood's head, really got on top of that. So the four to McCosker, taking him on to 30. So no ball. The front foot overstepping the crease. Pity, really, because it was a very useful ball. Peter Lever, fairly confident, his shout would have been upheld there by umpire Spencer. Well, towards the end, it looked as though the best chance the England bowlers had of breaking through, in fact, was with the Australian batsman padding up and playing no stroke. They did that two or three times, and uh, they must have been fairly close. They finished up with McCosker on 46, Ian Chappell 25, Turner batted reasonably well for his 21, but um, it was uh, slow batting towards the end. Chappell concentrated on uh, playing for tomorrow rather than uh, getting any extra runs this evening, and uh, it was tough going for the England bowlers. Well, now tomorrow, uh, the pitch will deteriorate a little bit, not all that much, I shouldn't think. It's still a very, very good batting pitch, and as far as I'm concerned, Australia still faced an immense task in getting a draw out of this game at Lords.